The late Dr. Abraham's family described him as having been a good husband, caring father and dedicated community activist. His widow, Otilia Abraham, says this is not only a loss to the family alone, but also to the community at large. Apart from the fact that, of course, he was a freedom fighter, and that is one of the ways in which we met. And I will remember him as a person who never really thought about himself, but always thought about the next person and worked very hard to get the best from everybody. At their family house, friends and mourners came in one by one to pay their last respect. Dr. Abrahams was born in October 1936 in Cape Town, South Africa. He started his primary and secondary education at Trafalgar School in Cape Town before studying medicine at the University of Cape Town, where he earned his first medical degree. The late doctor then moved to Namibia in 1963 and established a medical practice at Rehoboth, where he got involved in secret political activities, including the formation of the guerrilla movement Yuing Chuing Chan. After his short arrest by the then Southwest African police, he then fled the country and pursued his studies while also playing an active role in the quest for Namibia's independence. He returned to Namibia in 1977 under the Tunhale arrangements where he again became involved in the civil society organizations and private medical practice until his death. His daughter, Dr. Yvette Abrams, described her late father as caring, saying it was from him they learned the spirit of activism. My dad was a great teacher. He taught me everything I know about revolution, about social transformation and change. And, and, and many of us, my generation, we were never formally trained in the struggle. We were trained by our parents or by older comrades. So I guess that's what I will remember the most. Um, whenever I'm in a particular tight situation, then I always think to myself, well, what would Dad do? Um, I will miss being able to call him and going, Dad, what do you think? He is survived by three children, six grandchildren and his wife. A ceremony to celebrate his life will be held at the Gateway Centre in Komasdal on Friday before his burial in Venduk over the weekend. Jeff Tashihomino, NBC News, Venduk.